I'm conflicted on this one because on one token, I remember being the guy who said Brennan needs to spend more time uh, make doing bits and recording stuff and sharing them online on social media or something. I think I said something on early, early when I was doing some of these streams and critiquing some of this stuff because I come up from it being a former fan of the show, right? I used to watch T Fat K. I used to be a fan of it. I used to be part of the fucking T Fat K army. So I I kind of come from it as a fan point of view first of all. Now obviously it's terrible and it's fun to laugh at the dumb things he says and does, but I come from, from a fan. I remember being a fan saying, hey, no matter how terrible you are at stand up, you should put more content out there of you doing stand up or trying to be funny because right now all people see is you just sitting on the podcast talking but don't see actually doing the thing that you're meant to be a professional at, the thing that makes you the most money, blah, blah, blah. No matter how bad it is, just put it up there because some people are going to find it funny. Now, the bad thing about him is that, unfortunately, so far, even though he's been so long in the game and it's now approaching, it feels like 10 years, it feels like it. I'm not sure if it's true. Maybe it's a bit seven, but it feels like he's approaching the 10 year mark of being a stand up comedian. And it feels like Brendan Shaw hasn't improved that much from the time that he did the Showtime special. Um, you'd be surprised to gringo pappy i don't think we've seen that much improvement and even the skits that he's doing and whatever aren't really helping his cause so even the content i said he should be making i feel like it's doing him more harm than good because it's showing that he's not at the level his talent or his ability to tell jokes doesn't match up to the crowds he's performing to the frequency of his tours how he presents himself online who he sits next to it just doesn't make any sense like you know he's not at that level he's maybe uh open mic level comedic comic at best but obviously he's doing these big shows of course he's got a t podcast fan base and he's selling merch and stuff and he's positioning himself next to certain people which i think is basically hurting him i know he's terrible at stand-up i know he's bad maybe the worst but i don't think he's as bad as his content makes it seem as but i think because he sits next to these big established comics and he's always talking about big established comics and he's always getting involved in big established comics business trying to present himself as a big established comic it makes him look worse when you hear what he's saying in stage it's like oh that's this stuff is not matching do you know what i mean that's what i mean i don't know if this makes any sense but anyway continuing on from that me trying to cop some pleas and cop some flipping sympathy for the guy i guess recently he did this whole thing at this hotel hotel emma which is i guess a boutique hotel of some sort which i'm assuming he has some sort of brand deal with or they gave him free rooms when he goes to perform and he did this whole thing of him reading a book drinking whiskey and promoting his tiger cum stuff that he has right and they gave him i guess an apron with thick boy written on the back of it and it says when i come to texas i keep it fancy you heard hotel emma i look like a life coach that works in the mall all right cool and then he's got a bit that he did alongside with bgl that is pretty brutal Brendan, I've been looking for you everywhere. What are you doing drinking in the library? Shh. Oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, is this shocking to you, Mark? That this quote unquote meathead likes to get a mental workout as well? well? It's not even about that. It's noon and you're drinking tiger thick whiskey. Yeah, dude, it is noon. It's noon. It's early for people like you. Oh, you're an alcoholic. No, I'm not, dude. It's. It's 9 p.m. in Calcutta, India. I, I don't even think that's true. Okay. Well, it turns out that Shakespeare and Tiger Thick go hand in hand. Don't be preposterous. I don't even think that's Shakespeare, Brendan. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Big up the library that's in the middle of a nightclub, number one. <laughs> big up you can hardly understand what he's saying i've got headphones on and the first few lines are like hard to get your head around big up b big up bgl being the resident social media um content guy there right I, 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 who i would argue who it could be argued doesn't have a funny bone in his body either but hey let's 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 use him as the flipping guy to fill my content with i don't know man I don't know. I'm just scratching my back, scratching my head here. That was maybe one of the worst things I've seen in my entire life, legitimately, in terms of a skit. And like I said beforehand, I think these things, as much as I was telling the guy, hey, you should maybe concentrate on making more of these skits and putting stuff out there. It doesn't matter how terrible it is. The fact that Taron Tactical thinks it's funny says everything you need to know, right? This guy. This is the black dude that does all the fucking self-defense classes, isn't it? I'm pretty sure, right? Is that him? Should probably tell you everything you need to know about it, right? Oh, no, it's not him. It's not him. Okay, somebody else. Oh, 
it's that gun range they all go to, right? Um, where they all go to, where they've got all the hot girls standing next to you that help you, you know, they jack you off while you're, sh- while you're shooting your gun or something. I don't know what they do. But yeah, um, the fact that this guy thinks it's funny is probably not the best thing in the world. But yeah, um, what do you guys think of the chat about that little skit? What do you guys think of him reading a book, drinking whiskey, saying it's Shakespeare? What was a funny bit in it again? But you have to surprise he's reading a book. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what the bit was. <laughs> I don't know what the bit was, man. <laughs> what was up, Joey? Say for someone who owns an alcoholic beverage, he sure knows how to sell it, right? Acting like an alcoholic, mate. The funny thing about Brendan with the thick, thick cum or tiger thick whiskey, it's nothing aspirational about it, in it. Good point, what Joe made there about him being alcoholic. It's nothing, especially these. I feel like these alcoholic brands that are endorsed by celebrities. For the most part, if you're somebody that drinks a lot or you have a discerning palate, you know the booze isn't going to be great. You know it, right? You know it's not going to be good. You know it's not going to be like, you know, the best tier, the best level, the best quality. But you're buying it kind of because you like the celebrity and you're kind of buying into the lifestyle kind of aspirational side of things, right? It's going to make you look cool. Like the, the good example always is going to be Proper 12 by Conor McGregor. You know that stuff's not going to be good. It's probably going to be, at best, maybe similar to like a Jameson's. But you're buying it because you want to be like Conor McGregor. You want to look like you come out of fucking Peaky Blinders. You want to live that kind of lad lifestyle. You, whatever. You just like him as a person. That's why you're buying it. So it feels like, to me, the other problem with Tiger Thick whiskey isn't maybe the taste or maybe the price, which is crazy. It might be the fact that He's not really created anything aspirational. I mean, there's nothing really kind of like that's going to draw you in and be like, oh, yeah, I need to, I need a bit of this, you know? It's just kind of, he sells whiskey, he's a comedian, he used to do UFC. There's nothing aspirational about it at all, zero. It's not like something for a guy who kicks ass and slays the puss or I don't know, whatever thing that they do, their alpha male nonsense stuff. There's nothing about it that really subscribes to it. Like, if you get this, you can drive a Porsche. If you get this, you can ride an e bike. If you get this, you can knock people out. It's like Tiger Fick. Like, nothing about it is aspirational, really. That's maybe the part that he's really struggling on. Maybe. Who knows?